Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Apologies for a few minutes out. We just wrapped up the other session. This is a quarantine series and we are talking about exponential growth in this episode. And with me is going to be Michael Podlinski. Um in my training career as a young trader having attended other trainers programs, one trainer that I specifically remember, somebody who worked hard on his game was absolutely prepared for the training and did a wonderful show in Karachi. I learned a lot of sales from Michael Kotlinski, his techniques in one workshop. It was a beautiful, beautiful sales ride of years that you could learn in that workshop. And I thought case quarantine series may Michael Kotlinski was Zuru Bulana Chaye and he has been very kind, agreed with um agreed on coming on the show and has worked with me on what we'll be discussing. Exponential growth is the topic. Uh, let me introduce Michael Kotlinski to you. He is an exponential growth guru. Exponential word has become very relevant. A uh, lot of experts, thought leaders have been talking about this term specifically uh, with the technology growing exponentially while other uh, things have grown linearly. Uh, Michael Kotlinski has served over 770 organizations in 37 countries and seven continents. uh that's a lot for a trainer for an educator he's been around the world over 38 years michael has been delivering amazing results for his clients uh lots in his profile there uh the big companies amazing books remarkable content for many many learning seekers and he has helped many other trainers as well on the way i am pleased to have michael kotlinski with us this afternoon hi michael how are you ah so much it's great to be here thank you Wonderful. Good to see you. How have you been, and how's the lockdown for you? Can you tell us where you exactly are, and how's the lockdown around you? Oh, we're in beautiful, exotic Singapore. Uh, that's our home base, and we've had the the lockdown, and basically they call it circuit breaker here. You know, uh, break that circuit of reinfection, and uh, that's been circuit that's breaker. been okay. Uh, you know, a lot of us have gotten closer to family because of it. Uh, a lot of us have gotten more sleep. Um, a lot of us actually have used it to reinvent a lot of what we're doing, and we're creating out of it a new normal. That is, uh, working from home has finally been accepted. It's something I've been pushing for fifteen, twenty years, and uh, uh, a lot. Of, oh no, we can't. Out of sight, out of mind. Uh, won't, won't. And. Um, but it, the studies show it'll actually boost productivity up to 30% in sales teams particularly with your top third you know uh, the top third they love it so they could be 40 50% middle third about 30% bottom third uh, you know maybe 5% uh if if we're blessed. but <laughs> but it, it it does seem to change people's perspectives having more control yeah. of their time it does it does definitely uh, framing it positively how this lockdown is helping us has pushed us in many many ways let's get to the subject we'll be talking about exponential growth aap hame join kar sakte hain comments mein put sakte hain aur live bhi join kar sakte hain towards the end michael english bhi bolte hain isliye zyada tar guftugu hum english mein karenge uh, lekin i will definitely translate it for you if needed please you just have to ask jo baat samajhna hai also it will be great if you can tag your relevant friends colleagues uh who would like to hear more about how to really really have explosive growth exponential growth in their businesses uh let's get on michael with the uh questions we have should we go sure i'm i'm ready okay what do we mean by exponential growth it's all over your profile you are the exponential growth guru so help us understand it okay uh a very familiar term today for all of us uh would be the exponential growth in a virus okay and it, one person gets it then two then four then six then four then eight then 16 and i actually ran 20 iterations it started with one and 20 days later the number is 524488 people that's that's exponential it starts flat and then all of a sudden the curve takes off and within a month it's millions Well, the same thing is true in exponential growth in productivity. We start off improving some people and helping them and if it's significant, they're working with others, they're growing, growing, growing and pretty soon we see major boosts in the trend in productivity. Uh I look at at governments 
and corporations, and they usually are happy with one to five percent increase. You know, they think that's great as long as it's yeah. moving up. The trend is okay. The, they're many times afraid to do something radically different. They don't want to rock the boat too much. Uh, it could end them up in financial ruin, or they could not maybe not get reelected. So they don't try to change things too very much. Uh, if we can, uh, they, they do what's called Kaizen, Japanese term, incremental yeah. improvement. Okay, increment a little bit, little bit, little bit. We need incremental improvement day to day to keep changing, to keep, keep growing. But uh, as management guru Tom Peters said, Kaizen is the death of any organization. Because you finally get behind your competition. You finally begin to lose ground. You need to, every two to three years, completely re-engineer what you're doing. An old Michael Hammer term. Uh, re-engineer, rethink, regrow. Uh, I've done that in my own business. I've been doing the Kaizen for years. And, you know, uh, Omer, I... I was so knowledgeable what I was doing, so comfortable with it. The last book I wrote in 2012, I wrote in 10 days. Uh, it just, poof, I, I knew it so well, it just flowed out of me. Well, uh, in 2017, I thought if I make another five-year plan, which I've been doing since I started my business, if I made another five-year plan, I would limp along to retirement. And I never wanted to retire. So I said, okay, I'm going to do something different. I made my first 12-year plan. And I thought with 12 years, wow. I've got a lot of time to change, to grow, to learn. So I began to research. I started getting excited about new material, new things I didn't know about, new areas. Became a bit of a, a polymath, learning in so many multiple areas, which helped me rethink some of the old areas. And I began to realize I had been burned out since 2000 and eight, uh, I, oh. I was, it, well, actually maybe sort of 2012, because after I wrote that last book, I, I wasn't changing or growing at all. So I began to really rethink what I was doing and focus more on my growth. And it's amazing what's happened. For example, in 2019, uh, in, in addition to writing this new book series, Take Back Your Life, uh, I also sold my very first master country license to license my IP in another country. And uh, that happened in 2019. I was doing a program for Nomura uh, and Morgan Stanley, Citibank, the largest investment banks in, in Japan. And it, it, it stimulated me to really think then about selling licenses to what I'm doing and something I've been thinking about for years but hadn't acted on and began to act in more of an exponential way. Uh, going back, when you remember, you're, you're too young yet. <laughs> going back to when computers got started, they would take Honeywell, for example, would take one of my past clients, they would take three stories, four stories of an office building, the whole floor to make a computer and it was run on vacuum tubes. Uh, and it needed a lot of space because vacuum tubes gave off heat and there would be fans blowing the heat out. Uh, what would happen, though, because of the glowing vacuum tubes, the, they would attract insects. Moths would fly in. and they would see the computers. Up. Yeah, they would settle in the, in the, in the connections and pss, short out the circuits. So engineers had to go in and debug these computers. That's where we get the term oh. from. I'm not kidding. So they debug. would go and have kind of fixing now you can't fit three stories of an office building in a in a rocket to send to the moon so when they wanted to go to the moon they had to condense everything so it became uh transistors and then it became circuit boards computers were growing exponentially now the software changed things because someone came up with a software called visicalc and visicalc allowed us to do spreadsheets Okay. Instead of doing it manually now, they would do it in a microcomputer and it took a whole floor of accountants 
uh, and eliminated them because now the manager who would have to take all the pieces anyway and enter them in from all the different accountants could do it on one single spreadsheet. And so you eliminate 50 people and one person can do the work. So the computer changed the technology and changed in technology exponentially. And then the software changed everything exponentially. Uh, and the idea is that uh, we need to be thinking this way in terms of what we're doing here today. Uh, for example, uh, I had a guy that attended one of my time management programs. His name is Simon Ng here in Singapore. He's a agent, insurance agent with Prudential. And he attended the program and he'd been in sales for three years and hadn't, so, hadn't made an international, a national, or even a local contest as a winner. Uh, but he came up to me afterwards, shook my hand, said, Mike, I finally get it. I need to value my time. Uh, he said, I'm going to change. I said, oh, that's great. Didn't, didn't hear from him for six months. Six months later, I was still living in the U.S. and via snail mail, I get a letter from him. He says, dear Michael, you'll notice from the letterhead, I've made the million dollar round table. That's the top 2% wow. of agents worldwide. Uh, next time you're back in Singapore, call me. I want to buy you lunch. I thought, cool, free lunch. Uh, free lunch. Finally, actually, a free lunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, I was so so proud of him. And went and met with him, and he explained what he changed. He used to leave at 6.30 in the morning, come home 10.30 at night, exhausted. Did that every day, six days a week. The only time he saw his wife and his new daughter was on a Sunday. He's what I would call a Sunday dad. Uh, and he said, no, 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 not anymore. What I do is I have breakfast with my bride and daughter every morning. And then I go to work. And he used to waste time at work, lunch, tea breaks, having those functions with fellow agents who never bought anything from him. So he reserved those times for prospects and for clients and all the time in between, sell, 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 sell and be productive with his time. Some of the agents in his office said, ever since you took that stupid Podolinsky time management course, the stupid thing, you, you, you don't have time for us anymore. Yes, he didn't. But he wouldn't leave home until 8 o'clock after having breakfast with his family. And he'd be home at 6.30 at the latest to have dinner with them. You see, he began to spend time with people that mattered. He valued his time. Though many of those agents that complain are no longer in the business. And what you need to be thinking of is how do you use your time exponentially better and make sure every minute counts in your day. Understand the true value of your time. And what we're working on is to be able to make this book available so that the average salesperson can understand from it how to ascertain the value of their time and where their time is going. Uh, would you like another example? Makes sense. Yeah, please, please. That was my next question. Help us visualize this. You've already given a beautiful example. Time ki ahmiyat ki misal diye, bahut achhi misal. Subah se lage mein, raat tak lage mein, itwar se family ke saath hai, to Sunday dad hue. Lekin khayalat mein shift aata hai. Time jahan laga rahe hain, uh, kya value hai? Jab shift aata hai, to usi din ke andar productivity bad jati hai. Aur Michael ye encourage kare. Michael, another example help us visualize exponential growth. Sure. Uh, I was in Toastmasters years and years ago, and a guy came in from Ghana as a recent immigrant, and he, no matter what speech he had to give, he talked about success and motivation. To be enthusiastic, you must act enthusiastic. You must be motivated. You must want to succeed. And, and you know, it was, it was fun to listen to him, but it was the same speech no matter what the topic. And he kept giving that speech. And when I first met him, he told me he was so broke, so little money, he had to park his car. And it wasn't a fancy car. He'd park it six blocks away. So it would be there in the morning. Otherwise, the bank wanted to repossess it and he needed his car to go out and sell. 10 years later, he was named Venture Magazine's Business Man of the Year. 
And he has, was employing hundreds of people across the US, highly successful. And now everybody was coming to him to find out how they could be, become successful too, how they could grow their organizations. And he was giving them the same speech he given in Toastmasters. He had the idea to value his time and to not be negative, but to see things in very positive light in a very positive way. Um, Another one, I, I'm using this example. Uh, I learned about this when I was in Japan, I, when I sold my first master license and doing these programs for the banks. Uh, I learned from an uh, organization you might have heard of called Microsoft. I'm sorry, I'm, being, I'm, being, I'm joking here. Uh, what is Microsoft? Yeah, Microsoft been around for you know, 40 plus years. And in Japan, the economy has been pretty much in the negative. Uh, they have they have negative banking interest rates uh, on your savings. You got to pay the bank's money to put money in the bank, uh, and it's a broken system for for over over twenty years. And Microsoft decided to change things, and they've been experimenting. They came up with a four day work week. Yes. And it's intriguing that this four-day work week in Japan, they tried it for a month and they will, they will roll out. They need to make adjustments. They need to make sure everybody else can keep up with the change. But productivity improved 40% in one month. That's amazing. Wow. That's Letting amazing. one day go increase productivity 40%. Yes, just making one change and that is to go to a four-day work week. And why? Think about it. People finally got sleep. People finally had balance. People could finally see their families. People felt like they, they could actually think creatively now, as opposed by having this freedom, they could now uh, have three days to spend with family on other pursuits and uh, exercise and so forth. And they really changed and transformed their lives. So many organizations, if you look at the top 10 most productive countries in the world, most have a four day work week and none is working 40 hours or more. None of them. Uh, I look at the number one country for long work days and that's Singapore, surprising to people. Uh, many times people right away say, oh, India. Well, yes, Mumbai uh, and Bangalore, long, long, long work days. However, as a country, no, but a shorter work week where people actually can develop energy and enthusiasm for what they're doing really makes a big difference. Uh, another, another one, we take a look at, you've heard of Kaspersky Labs? Kaspersky, they're the security company? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, Kaspersky Labs, they do. Uh, are we okay in sound? Can you come again? Yes, no. Are we okay on sound now? We are, we are. Okay, okay. I, I, the joys of technology, it's fantastic when it works. It's, uh, but the Kaspersky Labs, uh, they make some of this um, antivirus software. They're famous for okay. that. They banned smartphones in the office. They tried it for a month and they've carried it through for years now. Uh, they wow. had a twenty-six percent boost in productivity. Why? Twenty-six uh, percent is significant. Why? Because Just by shutting phones in the office, the productivity yes. went up twenty-six percent. Smartphones. Smartphones. If you need to place a call, you use a landline. Okay. But it, what happened is people were checking phones, and there's, then there'd be a notification. Oh, let me let me check that. Oh, this looks interesting. Oh, that's a that's a funny. I'll watch that video for a minute, and an hour later, you know, uh, they're still still watching. Uh, every time you hear a notification, depending on which study you believe, somewhere between eleven minutes to twenty three minutes fifteen seconds is lost in productivity with every notification, and wow. some people get forty, sixty, eighty notifications a day. No wonder they're not productive.
Now, if it's taking you away from another notification, that's not going to take that long to get back to what you're doing. But if you're on an A1 project, a really important project, or you're trying to contact your, your top clients, being distracted for any length of time can destroy your flow, destroy your productivity, and really take money out of your pocket and your whole organization. Got so, it. Beautiful examples there. Wonderful examples. Uh, Michael Podolinsky, some baat hai. Sorry, Michael, I sort of translate, try translating the gist of what you've said. Uh, exponential growth pe or bahut focus of productivity pe, time ki value pe. Microsoft ki baat hoop sirut misal hai. Char din ka work week kiya, 26 visa productivity bad gai. Um, uh, Dousre daro ki uh, phones band kiya, productivity bad gai. We have heard that. Um, so Michael emphasized kar rahe hai kya hasil kar sakte hai apne work se, wohi work jo aap is work bhi istamal kar rahe hai. एक नोटिफिकेशन रिसर्च बताती है 11 मिनट की डिस्ट्रैक्शन क्रिएट करता है माइकल हेल्प अस अंडरस्टैंड इज एक्सपोनेंशियल ग्रोथ इज इट अ माइंडसेट व्हाट डू आई हैव टू बिलीव इन टू मेक दिस हैपन फॉर माय सेल्फ वेल यू हैव टू रियली वैल्यू टाइम एंड वैल्यू योर इंपॉर्टेंस एंड योर टाइम लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट समथिंग वी गॉट सेल्स मैनेजर्स मार्केटिंग मैनेजर्स लिसनिंग यस यस Some okay. of them. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, do they? Do Do any of you ever run meetings? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm being. And, and many, many of the people do. Yes. Yeah. And managers typically spend 55 percent of their time in meetings. Uh, anything over 25 percent, according to the late great uh, P, uh, Peter Drucker, anything over 25 percent is a massive waste. of human potential and resources. And most sales managers, marketing managers are running long meetings uh, and the people in those meetings are also wasting their time. Here's, I'd like to offer you a suggestion. Stop this insanity now. Instead, look at 15 minute meetings. One five, 15 minute meetings wow. standing. 15 minute standing meetings. Uh, Amazon's doing it, Global's, uh, uh, Google's doing it, as are schools and other industries. And by having a 15 minute standing meeting, nobody falls asleep. Everybody is expected to talk, okay? Uh, and there's a simple basis to this. Uh, what they do is first share what you did yesterday. Now, If somebody cannot remember what they did yesterday, it couldn't have been a very good day. I'm sorry. Second, this is They important. should soon be forgotten. Every day, and it's at the beginning of the day. So the, the second question is, what are you going to accomplish today? If they can't answer that, they're going to have a bad day. So it forces people to think about what they've done and where they're going, improving any of the mistakes from the past. Third is... What do they need help with? Uh, do they need to talk to the manager? Do they need to find budget? Do they, they need some outside resources, some tech people to help back them up? What do they need? And you go around the room and everybody shares quickly, standing. You don't have a two hour meeting when you're standing. Huh? One of the big problems, uh, you know, after an hour, people just talk nonsense, rubbish. Yeah? So shorter, the better. Some Google meetings will last 30 minutes, but usually they try to do 15 minute meetings and keep people productive along the way. Uh, and it, it just Good. makes it more productive. And this new normal for us about, uh, about going and having people working from home. Again, mentioned I've sharing for years with sales managers to try it because uh, they can reap a 30% boost in productivity, but it will make a difference if they finally do, do implement it. Uh, some of the things that we got to do along the way is being maybe a little bit more flexible. Uh, sometimes businesses have a, a set thought and a set product they're selling a service, but there was a, a sales or pardon me, a Saturday night live episode. It's a comedy show uh, in the U S and they had a business set up selling tape and people would come in and ask, Hey, I, I need some uh, double-sided tape so I can stick things on the wall. 
uh, and they would sell it, right? But then most people came in and they were saying at the time, this was years ago, I, you have sell cassette tapes. And they said, no, just the sticky kind. And they, through the episode, it wasn't a very funny one, but I remember it because of the stupidity of it. Uh, people kept in ask, coming in, in and asking for cassette tapes and they didn't sell them. Well, if you have clients asking for something, shouldn't you adjust your business to give them what they need? And what our salespeople need to do is saying, how can we improve what we're doing? What other services or products would you like from us? Uh, and maybe, maybe ask in threes, what three things can we do to better improve our service? Because it's easier to answer three than one. You ask for one, they go, well, I don't know what the one is. It could do that, maybe that, maybe that, maybe that and that, but I don't know what the one is. But if you ask for three, you always get at least one, usually three, sometimes five. So that's that's one of the things. Uh, stay in touch with our clients uh, as much as possible because even if they're not buying now, we want to be top of mind when we do connect with them. Uh, and make sure that as we're working on this, maybe consider the five-hour rule. And billionaires use this all the time. That is spend five hours every week reading a new book. Five, five hours, hours every week? Yep, five hours every week reading a new book and try to read the book in five hours. Uh, if there's a chapter or page that isn't making sense, you skip it. Try to get the best ideas out of what you're reading. Uh, Warren Buffett spends 80 to 90% of his time reading and researching. Uh, and it, it, you find Bill Gates does it and many of the big billionaires are doing this because it's helping them grow their minds exponentially, capturing new ideas. Uh, beautiful, by the way, beautiful. if you're not Growing a fan, their minds exponentially, yeah, Michael, go on. Okay, if, if you're not a fast reader, here's a suggestion. At least it works in English. I'm not sure about Urdu and other languages. But if, you're, if you read the first sentence in every paragraph, it's usually called the declarative sentence. And the rest of the paragraph supports that first sentence. So here's an interesting fact. If you read the first sentence of every paragraph and skip the rest, you get 80% of the content. And you read wow. in a fraction of the time. And it's easier to remember the key points than it is all the detail that backs up and supports the point. Uh, it just helps you. Very uh, good tip that. for those who are just slow. If you read the first paragraph of the first line, it's the first declaration. If you read the first paragraph, it's the first paragraph. So just by reading the first line, 80% of the sense can be made. In 5 hours, you can finish one hour of the book. You can do billionaires in the world. Because it grows their mind. First, you have to learn the mind. Then the then results in life change. Uh, the mind needs to expand. And that, therefore, we ask this question on mindset. Mike, would you like to add anything to the mindset? And once you're done, I'd like you to come to do's and don'ts of exponential growth. Sure. Uh, most industries have gone gone away uh as, even though it's 100 years old because you know we do, like i used to be in the business forms industry and they don't use that anymore i'm glad i left it when i did uh but i know of harvey mckay who wrote how to swim with the sharks without being eaten alive i used to teach his yeah. son karate and uh, when i was selling business forms we had a jeweler's envelope which was about like this and it had a little flap, but the, it had a center seam in it. And jewelers would put rings or ear, earrings, something in it, a wristband. And then they would separate the flap in the middle where it was glued together and then put the, the flap over and down in that little groove. And it would hold it okay. still without having to tape it shut. You with me on that? Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so that seam allowed jewelers to put a flap, they could open and close it, open and close it until it was done and fixed for the client. Yes. And then they would wet it and seal it until they came pick it up. Well, that's a specialty envelope. And all the other envelopes, very few organizations use them except for banks that mail statements still, which doesn't make any sense to me. But 
then most of them gone bye bye. Harvey McKay's company, McKay Envelope, is still making two hundred and fifty million dollars or more a year because they work only on specialized envelopes. Uh, the oh. more complex they are, the more they have things to tear off and rip off, and uh, made out of Tyvek, which is like a plastic-like uh, the material with fibers in it that is hard to destroy. Uh, oh. They make specialty envelopes that nobody else made, so they still are selling envelopes. Uh, we need to be thinking: How do we make sure our what we're offering is so unique that others have difficulty copying us? that put us in a unique niche where we're top of mind with everybody who needs to buy what we're selling. And that's just a thought that I had there for you. Uh, Wonderful. Great example. Lifafe bets ki dhai million dollars. Lekin aise lifafe banate hain jo koi aur nahi banata. The mic ki emphasize kar rahe hain ki dekhen ki aap aisa koi kaam kar rahe ho jo ki auron ke liye karna mushkil ho. Then you have a place sustainable. Mic go on. Okay. Uh, you, next question you had was, yeah, I wanted to know the do's and don'ts. You've already emphasized like meeting is a, a do, uh, valuing your time. But would you like to elaborate on this specifically with the don'ts? Okay, uh, okay. Here, a couple of thoughts. Uh, focus not on just trying to destroy your competitors, but on growing your own business instead. Uh, Jim Rohn. One of my gurus uh, back in the 70s and 80s, uh, he said there's two ways you can have the tallest building. One is by going around at night trying to destroy everybody else's building or tearing it down. Uh, but one, you might get in trouble. <laughs> two, uh, you can't destroy everybody's. There's just too many competitors out there. So instead, focus all your effort on making yours the best building, the tallest, the strongest. In other words, make your team the best, the strongest. People will try to poach your people. But if you keep growing them, developing them, showing you care about them, they won't want to go anyplace else. So you're going to grow the largest organization, the best organization, and make the most sales, market the most, and be the most successful in all of Pakistan and maybe the region of the world. So just keep working on that. Uh, making sure that what you're doing is, um, is is striving to eliminate anything that is de detracting from you. Look at what is making your workflow difficult. Uh, the Japanese work a lot on efficiency, and they will they put. When I was chairing the first productivity forum in Singapore. They they were very proud. Ten percent growth. Remember, one or one to five percent was normally good. Ten percent is incredible. So what they would do is move furniture so you have better path to move in. They put a microphone on every worker, not to hear what they were saying, but recording how many words it takes to convey a message and encouraging people mm -hmm. to convey with less words. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody in Pakistan would want to have a microphone on them. They sure don't I think I think everybody in Pakistan already has a microphone on oh. them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're talking on their phones. Yes. yes. You, know, you know, once in 2008, I was in a, um, in a program. Sorry, just two minutes. Um, and they were talking about it was a training in UK. And the discussion was that people don't show up for voting. And I was from Pakistan. I said, that's exactly the same in Pakistan. We not enough people show up for voting. But when you we went into reasons, the reasons were opposite. There, people don't show up for voting. It was like, whoever will come into power will work for us. Yes. And in Pakistan, the mindset is, whoever will come into power will be the same. So why get out of the bed? So the problem is the same, but the reasons could be different. Uh, go on, Michael. Tell us a little more. And you've already touched upon the team part. So I will come to how to grow your team into an yeah. exponential team. And maybe you could put the two together as well, however you feel comfortable. Okay. Uh, well, that they, you know, I mentioned that the, the Japanese were doing this 10% thing and efficiency. The Germans came in with Lean Six Sigma. And what they were doing uh, was also behavioral changing. 
modifying behavior, behavior modification, and employing, well, not employing engagement, but behavior modification and working with people to develop their skills and growing them. Uh, and because they focused more and more on the people, they had a 24% boost in productivity in one year. 10% was good, 24% so much better. Then there was this Aussie woman, Australian lady. She was a nurse by training and she got a master's in nursing and then an MBA. And she started a home for the elderly, a nursing home for the elderly, because there are aging populations in just about every country around the yeah. world. So she started this. And what she did was she treated, she knew coming as a nurse how tough it is. She treated every nurse with such love and she made them feel appreciated. She loved them so much in her actions and the way she treated them, celebrating, celebrating their birthdays, celebrating any good day, celebrating making it through a full week, celebrating any successes with one particular patient. So just finding ways to make them feel good that the drudgery of working with old people and their crabbiness didn't hurt them so much. And as a result, the patients loved their nurses. They loved the facility. And within eight years, they grew from one to five of these facilities for the aging. Now, I don't know what degree of productivity that is, but it's got to be well over a thousand percent. And she did that not from efficiency, not from uh, behavior modification, but by employee, using employee engagement and by making people feel good about what they're doing. Uh, right. I remember my old sales manager, uh, sales supervisor actually, and uh, I had a, had a really good day one day and I had normally two orders, new orders in a week was a good week. And I had a stack of my 12 new orders in a day. And he came in that from a meeting and it was six o'clock. He was going to grab his work and go, go home. And he, he used to call me Podo for Podolinsky. And he said, hey, Podo, looks like he had a good day. And I said, yeah, Carl, it was amazing. I'll probably be here. I joked, I'd probably be here till midnight writing up these orders. And he was walking out the door and he stopped. And he turned around, went back to his office, called his wife, said, honey, have dinner without me. I need to help Podo tonight. And he stayed there for two hours with me writing up the orders. And I, I didn't have to stay till midnight and his help really mattered. And whenever he asked me for anything, I would walk through fire for that guy. I'm still in touch with him today. He's a consultant now. And I've, I've learned to be, become a friend with him again because of what he did. And this was back in the, in the 80s, early 80s. And if we can do the same thing with any salespeople we're working with, colleagues at work, uh, just doing it with your clients, it's amazing how you can develop relationships that will last decades uh, mm -hmm. and keep growing our businesses. So I highly recommend it. Fascinating example. I have asked you how to grow your exponential growth path. Pe kaise so Mike has told you efficiency is one way, but you listen to your story, that there are more orders in the office, we sit in the office, we ask you, uh, you had a good day. So there are many orders that say that there will be orders at night, so the boss has called to call him, that I'll come late, and Mike, who was a team member, he was joined with him, so that the orders will be quickly. There are such examples that remind the leaders. Ko yaad rakh hai. Saalo baad bhi Mike is in touch, hai. he's a consultant now. Beautiful story there. Uh, Mike, I have an interesting question to ask you. Uh, the Jim Collins text popularized big, hairy, audacious goals. Yes. Uh, B-hacks for organizations. And on the other side, we've heard of smart, specific, measurable, achievable. Um, what exponential growth, smart or B-hacks? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I don't use either. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I, I like smart goals. I tried to find the source and I finally tracked it down to Peter Drucker in his The Practice of Management. And uh, 
and specific, measurable, attainable, uh, realistic, and time sensitive. Uh, since then, I it's been changed and modified. I prefer the R as being relevant uh, because attainable and realistic yeah, they're kind of the same in a lot of ways. And but relevant to their job. In other words, having goals specific to their job. Sales is different from marketing. Is definitely different from accounting. So everything should be specific to what the individual is doing. Uh, so I came up with my own acronym. I tend to think, okay, how can I grow in the world of, of what I'm doing in productivity and helping people exponentially grow? Uh, so I came up with XIM. A stands for XIM, A C T S dash I M. Letter I. A stands for ardent. Ardent. Ardent means I want it. I got to have it. I need it. Urgh. When you ardently desire something, you'll walk through fire to get it. In other words, if you don't ardently desire a sales goal, don't even bother setting it because you probably don't have the energy and drive to make it happen. You have to want it so bad that you'll do anything to get there, anything legal to get there. You want to make sure you ardently desire it and then write it down as a goal. I first started with a whole bunch of goals and I achieved almost none of them because they weren't ardently desired. Oh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. It wasn't motivating. The way to start motivation is to ardently desire something that you really want in life. And that may mean backing up the goal you're given by your boss with what you can achieve by achieving that goal for the boss. What that can mean to you in terms of bonus or in terms of extra commission or in terms of prestige. Uh, so you got to find an ardent reason before you write down a goal. Ardently desire. Uh, and so that's the A. Uh, the C is you got to make sure that as you're, as you're doing it, that you, can, you commit to it. See, ardent is good, but you got to commit to it. I will do this or die trying. That's commitment. Uh, just saying, okay, I'll see if I can do it. Or I'll try it a time or two. That's not going to get you there. You've got to be committed fully to it. Uh, you got to talk to colleagues, family, friends, anybody that any time they see you not focusing on your targets, not focusing on your goals, that they can hold you accountable. Even here at home and with my teenage son, he's my accountability partner. I, I've been telling him, look, we're not to have anything vile leave our lips. No cursing, uh, no negativity, nothing leaving our lips. Let's be, let's be pure that way. He said, okay, dad, we're going to work on it. And he catches me telling a joke that I learned from my dad that was not 100% in line with that goal. And he said, dad, uh, that's really not edifying. That's really not good. And I go, you're right, son. Oh, nothing is more humbling than when your son corrects you. <laughs> but I, it, yeah. it, it's helping me. I've, I've got accountability partners. So a, ardent, B, committed. A T is very similar to smart, timely. And by that means, uh, by that it means we have to make sure that we start on time, end on time, and have mile markers along the way. Most people, when they set goals, miss the mile markers. They have a goal for the end of the year. And they get there. <laughs> I'm not even close. Um, yeah. It doesn't help. But you got to know monthly weekly, daily, where you're at on your targets. And then you're more likely to achieve them. If you're falling behind, you redouble your efforts. If you're on target, maybe you might stretch a little bit and see if you can even do two days work in one day. Uh, when you know where you're at, you can yeah. change. Yeah. If you don't know, you can't change. You want to explain that? And then I'll finish with the I am. Wonderful. X I M smart goal setting up Ms. Sunoga, B X Sunoga. Um uh, Michael ka model hai X I M ardently desire. Yani aap ke andar se khwahish honi chahiye. Aap uske liye kuch bhi karne ke liye taiyar ho jaye. Commit kare aap us goal pe 
और टाइमली होना स्मार्ट में भी जिस तरह टाइम है तो टाइमली होना जरूरी है आई एम एम बिजी समझते हैं जब पूरा बता देंगे तो एक मरतबा दोबारा भी साथ बता दूंगा माई गो ऑन वट इज आई एम ओके and they're they're much related to uh the traditional nature of the goal um the the, the ax uh, the i in i am and the m m is standing for monitoring you got to monitor things along the way so that means you're monitoring your 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 months your weeks your your days and maybe even your hours finding out when out what hours are best with your clients to contact them uh but the the i is it's got to be inscribed inscribed that means yes in writing or in, in your computer but there's something visceral visceral not visceral visceral about paper and pen writing it down tends to yeah. plan it into our memory better uh it tends to enter the limbic system of the brain which works in the subcon which is the subconscious mind and works stress free so you need to have it in writing but also inscribed in your mind you wake up in the morning that your big goal is what you're thinking about right away uh yeah. you you're you go to sleep thinking about it during the day at lunch it comes back to your mind oh i got to shorten this lunch i've got work to do you, you know you you get focused when it's inscribed and the only way you can do that is number one writing it down two referring back to it on a regular basis repetition is the mother of all learning and and three talk about it. remember ben taylor when i use that story about him coming from ghana and yeah. from having his car uh being uh retrenched or taken back to going out and becoming venture magazine's man of the year he talked about it non-stop when he talked to his people wow. he talked about the toastmasters and the speeches that he was making was he telling himself and telling others yes and as a result it became so much a part of him you couldn't separate his beliefs and his goals from who he was that wow. is inscribed so yes monitoring is important but i am going to do this these are acts i am going to do it is the system that i came up with to hold all the pieces together beautifully put acts i am going to do आखिरी जो दो बात बताइए इंस्क्राइब्ड एंड मॉनिटर्ड पहले मॉनिटर्ड के गोल्स जब बनाए तो उसमें माइल जरूर डालें ताकि आप मॉनिटर कर सकें मेजर कर सकें मोटिवेट भी करता है और आपको प्रोग्रेस भी बताता है इफ यू डोंट नो यू कॉन्ट चेंज इट नहीं पता तो चेंज नहीं कर सकते इंस्क्राइब यानी लिख लें अपने दिल पे वैसे माइकिल ने एम्फोसाइज किया कि कागज पेन भी जो है लिम्बिक सिस्टम से उस गोल को जो आप लिखते हैं कागज पे पेन से वो आपके दिमाग में भी लिखा जाता है और आपके साथ रहता है समथिंग अबाउट दैट दीज आर द एक्स आई एम गोना डू दैट्स माइकल्स मॉडल फॉर गोल सेटिंग एंड फॉर एक्सपोनेंशियल ग्रोथ यू वांट टू ऐड टू दैट माइक हाउ मच ऑफ द हाउ मच ऑफ द उर्दू कैन यू मेक सेंस ऑफ हाउ मच ऑफ द हाउ मच ऑफ द लैंग्वेज दैट आई एम स्पीकिंग उर्दू कैन यू मेक सेंस ऑफ वेल आई आई कैन about 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 this much okay? <laughs> i'm sorry uh, i speak five languages fluently five unfortunately urdu is not one of them i speak english english american canadian australian and new zealand no, american all... is not <laughs> i like the five you speak i'm going to tell you the 55 that i speak with the area <laughs> going by that going by that in covid times where my channels value chains are disturbed um and change for good as well sometimes how can leaders ensure growth because we started 2020 with big promises companies had 2020 walls and there was a lot to be accomplished and somehow all has been disrupted yes well that's the uh, 23 trillion dollar question uh because most everybody has no clue what's going to happen in the future uh we look at what covid's done to the world and most countries have shut down because the world health organization told us this pandemic was going to be like the spanish flu and millions or maybe even billion would die uh um, but it turns out it's really not worse much worse than uh, the influenza viruses that always go around uh and in fact when it's hotter and there's no air conditioning uh it doesn't seem to have nearly as much effect 
And so we've done this lockdown and it's not going to go away because it keeps evolving. I think it's going to keep coming back and be with us, maybe permanently. At least that's what a lot of the experts are saying. And I'm not trying to demotivate you. I'm just trying to help people understand that if this is the case, this, what we have now, may be the normal if we keep quarantining people. Or you're going to find that some people are just going to have to, uh, you know, going to pass away. And it, the people that are affected are those over 80 years of age. But most of the people over 80 years of age have other illnesses, right? Um, they're, going to, they're going to die <laughs> soon anyway. And COVID is just kind of the, the last nail in the coffin. Forgive me for being negative here, but it's, it's true. I mean, I'm 65, and, uh, but I'm, I'm, with, I'm in my high school weight range. Uh, I exercise six days a week. And this week I ran five towers of our condo because we're in lockdown. I can't go to the gym. Gym's closed. So what I did is I walked up five 24-story towers. Uh, wow. That's 2,190 steps. Uh, <clears throat> and that's one of the ways I keep in shape. I also, when the gym closed, I asked for the weights, the dumbbell weights, and a weight bench, and I've been weightlifting at home. So I've still been doing my weights and I've been doing it hard and heavy. So my muscles are stronger and I'm as strong as I was at 45 or stronger. And that builds wow. not only muscles, but ligaments, tendons. I didn't know that this great book, Younger Next Year, changed my thinking. Uh, it's the science behind it. And uh, <clears throat> we can survive illnesses provided we stay in good shape. And... Uh, that will that attitude will help get us through whatever's coming up because we can't keep locking down businesses. Um, Twenty four percent of the jobs at least are going to go away, disappear because of this. Uh, you look at economies; it's going to be a tough year. So we need to make plans now. How can we use uh, workers working in their home? What can we provide in services that aren't currently being provided? What are people shopping at home? want? How can we improve delivery chains? A lot of the chains of, of distribution have been destroyed. And as a result, yeah. you start to see things missing in the supermarkets. We have to figure out what to do locally and regionally in order to grow what we're doing. And we can become powerhouses in what we're doing. Uh, just like this, doing a virtual workshop as opposed to going in, yeah. sitting in a seminar room, uh, virtual keynotes to motivate. This is not a keynote. This is a lot of little points. Yeah. If it were a keynote, we'd have three core ideas and supporting stories. I can turn it into a keynote. For okay. It gives the tale, doesn't it? <laughs> Sometimes I disappear when I have to do my things like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wonderful. So, Mike is Mike is uh, Mike has said very clearly that these are tough times, and tough times yeah. mean a lot of revisions. So whatever you know, the politics, the WHO, but we have come to this, and when we have come to this, so apna khayal rakhe, apni sehat ka khayal rakhe. Agar aap healthy hain, to aap bahut bimariyon se lada sakte hain, aur agar aap wo nahi kar sakte, to aap aur masail se waisi nahi lada sakte. So, as leaders, be zaroor apna apni teamo ka make sure ke aap apne Routines, health ke jo hai, wo bahal kare, exercise kare, achhi gaza khaye, kyunki bahut zaruri hai. Uh, Mike, anything else that you advise to leaders to uh, ensure? In fact, my next question also sort of uh, builds upon this. Uh, your advice to businesses that are in disrupted sectors uh, who can't see the future at this point. You know, there's some who are facing a pause or some creative thinking required, but there are some that have hit the uh, end and hit it uh, in a way that they didn't expect. Yeah. Well, uh, the rule of thumb I got in 1982 from a guy named um, Joel Weldon. And he said, find out what everybody else is doing and then don't do it. Uh, do it better. Do it differently. Uh, do it in, with a different emphasis. In other words, uh, keep innovating, keep growing. Uh, 
you know, we look at a lot of things happening in the in the financial world, and uh, it's it could be a very interesting year, if not this year, certainly the next. And we have to prepare now. Uh, companies generally at this time should be uh, building up cash reserves, but many of them are still borrowing. Uh, we as individuals should be building up cash reserves, make sure we have whatever it is that's needed. Uh, we need to make connections with clients, with, with other suppliers, and make sure we can help them in some way. Because as I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Uh, and we need to help each other out. And by building strong alliances now and building strong connections with clients now, if you are the one they most trust, they won't waste their time with others. Uh, we need to make sure that our bonds and relationships with clients, with suppliers, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, anybody else who we need for help in our business, that we have really strong ties with them and share information with them, share this with them. And uh, we can grow together if we all work together. Uh, because I promise you, there's so many people that aren't watching, so many people that didn't take the time, so many people that are watching funny cat videos instead of something that could possibly grow their sales careers. So uh, you are at an advantage by being here uh, with Umer. And please stay close to him. Watch everything he's got. He's got close to 50 videos and make sure that you keep learning growing if you've missed one go back and watch the others they are available online aren't they thank you it's very kind mike the choices we make up is what kya kar rahe mike ne emphasize kiya mushkil waqt hai aapke liye bhi team ke liye bhi suppliers vendors ke liye bhi aur aapka helping attitude aapko bahut kamyab bana sakta hai business pe bhi log yaad rakhte hain नंबर दो माइक ने एम्फोसाइज किया पूछे इर्द गिर्द से लोग क्या कर रहे हैं और जो वो कर रहे हैं कोशिश करें कि आप वो ना करें आ, अपने आप को मुख्तलिफ रखने के लिए एज अ बिजनेस अगर आप एक डिफ्रेंसिएशन रखते हैं आ, तो आप यकीन उस उस डोमेन में बहुत टाइम तक जब तक कोई और नहीं आता तब तक आप फ्लाई कर सकते हैं वंडरफुल माई लास्ट क्वेश्चन टू यू माइक थैंक यू वेरी मच दिस इज बिन रिमार्केबल द कॉन्शियंस एंड द कमर्शियल इंटेंस you know the conscience stops us many a times we don't hear it we shut it down the commercial interest and somebody has asked this as well that you know the goals are never ending organizations keep mounting on figures what you hit this year is just to be done next year and more so um so do you see them at odds how do we balance this swing okay um before that, i mentioned simon ng earlier Okay, and he grew, and I told you about his success there. But he, for 25 years, he kept making million dollar round table, and he's no longer wasting his time selling individual policies because of going to MDRT, getting more information. He now sells to companies, to MNCs, multinationals, uh, insurance for the entire organization. He gets special. Uh, underwriting so he can do that that's growing exponentially and then when you look at taking care of the world around us we all have a responsibility if we're doing well to take care of others so corporate yeah. social responsibility csr is important uh, our business we have uh, two orphanages that my my bride started i call her my bride we've only been married 20 years so we're still on honeymoon and uh, she started two orphanages. That's 30 kids and uh, 12 oh. full-time workers. Uh, but that's, that's her passion and our love because of it. I was adopted, so I'm all in favor of taking in kids who don't have parents. And, uh, but there's uh, many, many others that are out there that, that need help. And I know Pakistan's got uh, uh, millions of people yeah. that could use additional help. And we need to reach out. Don't wait for an excuse to do it. Try to do it every day. Uh, anything from helping a, a, a woman begging on the street, provided it's, it's not a syndicate, uh, to, uh, in, to going and investing 10% of what you have in other charities that you know do a real good. Some charities spend 50% of the money on marketing. 
uh, you got to know what they're actually spending. And going for those that have very low overhead, so most of the money gets to really help the people who need it. You're going to feel better. It's going to make the world a better place. Make like the world a better place, and you are part of the world. What you leave comes back to you. Uh, it's we're all connected. We're all wired, and we don't need pandemics to be teaching us this. Uh, we are smarter beings. Uh, thank you, Mike. It's been a pleasure listening to you. Uh, your energy has multiplied, I must say. But more than that, I think your um, your own realization about burning out and then. Sort of pivoting and picking this up has what inspired me the most in today's conversation. I wish you lots of health uh, and lots more energy to take your word around. You shared a story when we were in Karachi, and uh, um, I mentioned it on the messenger as well. If you remember it, and if you'd like to share that or anything else uh, for an inspiring close, uh, the Butch Roski story. Okay, uh, <clears throat> this this guy was an athlete. And uh, I, I, I hired this guy because he had a computer time sharing business. And uh, I mean, a, a computer business where he'd set up databases for people because people didn't have their own computers back then. And he worked, he worked on his computer and would, would set up databases. And I needed about uh, uh, 1,850 uh, names, addresses, phone numbers put on labels so I could put them on on envelopes and and post them out and uh he said i can do that how, how long how soon do you need it and i i gave him well uh, 10 days now i didn't really need it for a full two weeks but i thought if if i i need it in two weeks if i give him two weeks and he's late then i'm going to be late so i pushed him 10 days and so that that's a lot of work for that that much and and i said well you want the work don't you he had a reasonable price Okay, I, I promise you I'll get it in. I thought that's great. Ten days later, Federal Express delivers all the labels, everything perfectly. And I was happy. Uh, and I, I did this because I thought I was helping a guy in a wheelchair. He was an athlete, car accident, and he was in a wheelchair. And I thought, okay, I'm helping him out. What I did not know, he wasn't a paraplegic, you know, pushing two wheels. He was quadriplegic. He sat there, 18,500 names, addresses, and, and, and phone numbers with a pen in his mouth, bobbing his head, one letter at a time, blisters on his lips from 12, 14-hour days, but he got it done because he wanted the work, and I pushed him. I felt like a dirty maggot. And then I thought about it. You know, there's people that complain about everything, every little ache and pain. There's, there's people that complain, my work's so hard, my boss is pushing me too much. I, I'm, it, it, and this guy said, he could have said, look, you didn't protect me from the, from the drunk driver. You didn't protect me from, uh, from my tragedy and put me in this chair. No, but he didn't do that. He just says, I want to earn my way in the world. Give me a computer and I'll be able to earn my living. So he got somebody to put up the money and get him the computer. And he was working in his own business, serving people one letter at a time on his keyboard. One letter at a time. Maybe we should. Remarkable shouldn't. story. It moved me then. It moved me today, Mike. Thank you very much. What a lovely. Um, um, this Corona lockdown has forced us into many things, and one of them for for me has been to reach out to all the people that I've come across who have inspired me, who I'm a fan of, a friend of, and you're definitely somebody who I look up to. And you did wonders back then, and you're still at it. Thank you for the time. Any words you would like to leave us with? Uh, no, just, just thank you, and it's an honor to be here, and I hope everybody stays tuned to your channel and watches all your videos. Thank you. That's very kind, Mike. Stay well. This was Michael Podolinski. He joined us all the way from Singapore, and we exponential growth. Um, if you want to hear the next story again, if you have missed it, thank you so much for joining us. Sorry, I won't take your question. But until next time, inshallah.